I think there's a really big difference between Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis. At the time of this recording, July 17th, 2022, Ryan Garcia just pulled off his 19th KO and 23rd win overall. He did this in the sixth round against Javier Fortuna when he knocked him out with his signature left hook. And what seems like tradition at this point, Ryan Garcia would call out Javante Davis in the post-fight interview. But I will fight Tank next. If Tank wants that, uh, at 140, hey, but hey, hey, I'm gonna record all the negotiations so he, so you guys don't make no headlines saying I'm ducking. If he want it, let's get it. It feels like it's been years that this fight has been hyped, but never been close to fruition. Over a year and a half ago, Ryan Garcia went on to the Mike Tyson podcast called out Javante Davis and even FaceTime Javante Davis, but literally nothing came out of this. I love you, this nigga talking mad shit over here, Tank. <laughs> Look at this nigga, Tank. Two rounds, baby, two rounds. You can find several YouTube videos by very popular boxing channels discussing a potential super fight between the two. It would be an understatement to say that this fight hasn't been heavily anticipated by many fans alike. But unlike most anticipated super fights, would this fight even be competitive? Would this fight even be close? What I'm trying to say is that there is a big difference between Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis, and I think the difference is so big that this fight would not even be close. This is why Gervonta Davis is levels above Ryan Garcia. So first, let's go over some basic stats. Ryan Garcia stands at 5'10 with a 70 inch reach and has a record of 23 and 0 with 19 KOs, making that around an 83% knockout rate. Gervonta Davis, on the other hand, stands at 5'5 with a 67 and a half inch reach with a record of 27 and 0 with 25 KOs, making that at around 92.5% knockout rate. So at first glance, both fighters are undefeated and they have a very high knockout percentage. But Ryan Garcia seems to have the natural advantage at a taller frame and a much longer reach. But as you may know in boxing and fighting in general, the person with the taller frame or the longer reach doesn't necessarily make them the better fighter. So let's go over their resume. Like I said, they're both undefeated fighters, but the level of competition is vastly different between the two. Ryan Garcia has fought in one weight class, lightweight at 135 pounds, and has won one interim belt, the WBC interim lightweight title. On the other hand, Gervonta Davis has fought in three weight classes, super featherweight, which is at 130 pounds, lightweight, which is 135 pounds, and super lightweight, which is at 140 pounds. He has won four belts across these three weight divisions. He has won the WBA super featherweight title, the IBF super featherweight title, the WBA lightweight title, and the WBA super lightweight title. Now going over their level of competition, let's go over the former champions each fighter has faced. Ryan Garcia has only faced one in Luke Campbell, while Gervonta Davis has faced four, Gamboa, Santa Cruz, Barrios, and Pedraza. Notably, Leo Santa Cruz was a champion in four different weight classes, while Gamboa, though old when he fought Gervonta Davis, was a two division champ in the super featherweight and lightweight class, as well as a gold medalist in the 2004 Olympics. Though both fighters have had a young career, Gervonta Davis definitely has a leg up in competition and definitely has the stronger resume. But resumes are one thing. Which fighter has the better style for the other and which fighter has a better skill set to deal with the other. So Ryan Garcia is probably very well known as being an extremely quick puncher. He probably has some of the fastest hands in boxing and his left hook is so deadly. Not only is it an extremely quick punch, but it's also extremely precise. As you saw this Saturday against Javier Fortuna, he was able to place his left hook right on the temple and he's routinely placed it on the temple or the liver of many of his opponents. But besides his lightning quick hands and his extremely deadly and precise left hook, he really has nothing else elite in his skill set. He's been criticized for having a lack of head movement, footwork, and offensive variety like a right hand, an uppercut, or a jab. And to emphasize lack of head movement, Luke Campbell, who was the first real high level fighter that Ryan has faced, was able to take advantage of this and drop Ryan in the second round. And on the other side of this, you might be thinking, Gervonta Davis is just a power puncher. So this fight is simply just elite speed versus elite power. But if you are able to watch Gervonta Davis at a high level, he is extremely diversified. 
Most recently, he was able to show us his patience and high ring IQ when he perfectly timed Rolly with a counter in the sixth round. He showed this same level of patience, but instead in a more hunting and stalking approach when facing Mario Barrios. He eventually found a good opening in the eighth round when he dropped Mario Barrios once to the head and once to the body. He eventually wore down Mario Barrios and by the 11th round was able to TKO him. And with the Leo Santa Cruz fight, he showed us that he was able to trade with a very high level fighter and eventually showed us his devastating power when he delivered one of the most deadly uppercuts that I have ever seen live. And even though he didn't finish Isak Cruz, he displayed a really good ring IQ and defensive skill and mostly fought this fight on the back foot and eventually won this via points. Though this is a small sample size, I can go on and show you different ways Javante Davis is able to win his fights. And if you compare this with how Ryan Garcia finishes his fights, in his last 10 finishes, he KO'd his opponents 8 out of the 10 times with a left hook. I'm not going to go into extensive detail of how Ryan Garcia finishes his fights, but it's mostly moving forward using his superior speed and eventually catching them with a left hook. So through this pretty short but effective comparison, we can see that Gervonta Davis has much more weapons in his arsenal and he can switch up his attack in a number of different ways. Ryan in comparison is relatively very one dimensional and only has one really elite weapon in his arsenal which is his left hook. This is not to say Ryan doesn't have potential to have a really deep skill set, but frankly we haven't seen different approaches to his wins. So from the sounds of this video it sounds like I'm a really big Ryan hater, but I'm not. I actually think he's really good for boxing, he brings a lot of popularity and a lot of eyes to the sport. But there's levels to this, even though this fight would be huge and extremely popular, I don't think it would be as competitive or as close as people may think. And again, that's not to say Ryan doesn't have the potential to become better and eventually make this fight with Gervonta Davis competitive, but currently he hasn't shown that improvement in his recent fights. Personally, I'd love to see him fight George Cambosis, who is another fighter I would say is on that tier of just below a Tank, a Devin Haney, Tiafimo Lopez, or Lomachenko. And I know Cambosis did win over Tiafimo Lopez, but we need to run that back. Cambosis lost really decisively against Devin Haney, so I wouldn't necessarily put Cambosis on that tier yet. As for Gervonta Davis, I'd love to see him fight Devin Haney. I think that would be a really good fight against two undefeated, really young guys that have shown that they can be champions. What do you guys think? If a Ryan Garcia and Gervonta Davis fight would happen right now, do you think this fight would be close? Again, personally, I don't think it would be close. I do think these two fighters are on completely different levels.